This is a 3D printed drill press. This is a tiny drill bit. And that is a grain of rice. I need a drill press. Well, I have a drill press, but it's not really delicate enough for small parts. So I need a smaller, more accurate press. Okay, well, yeah, I have this one as well, and it's a beautiful little thing. But it's gone too far the other way. It's just not powerful enough. I'd like a press more powerful than this, but more accurate than this. Of less importance, I'd also like it to look good. I've been obsessed with these watchmaking machine tools for some time, so I'd really like to try to take inspiration from them into my own design. My benchmark for the project is going to be these micro drill bits. These will break very easily, so I see being able to use them as a good way to judge success. With that out of the way, let's get on with the build. This begins, as always, with some printed parts. Into the covers and spine pieces, I install a total of 10 threaded inserts. I put M4 nuts into 10 covers, then install these into the column. This is me experimenting with ways to install threads into concrete forms. Following this, we can install 4 M8 coupling nuts into the face of the column. Going back to the spine, a piece of 2020 extrusion is mounted to the top. This is then fit into the column and mounted via the threaded inserts. It's then aligned further with four M8 bolts that tighten into the coupling nuts. Moving down to the base for a bit, linear bearings are installed into these four columns, which are then glued into the base. Four more pieces are also installed to support and align the main column. One coupling nut is installed now in the base, along with two up the front for the table actuation. Before going forward, I sand the support lines out of some of the parts, as it'll be easier now than when it's assembled. This is a little tricky and takes me around 15 minutes. I then again use Vaseline to return colour to the plastic. I got some comments last time that this will destroy the plastic, but I can't find anything conclusive online and it's only left on for around 15 minutes. With the parts ready, they can be installed over the rest of the base and bolted down. Here, I have prepared two lengths of M8 threaded rod, including a flare in the middle to keep it in the concrete. These have coupling nuts on one end, which are installed into the base. Following this, the column can be installed over the top and, once you are absolutely ready, glued in place. That's clearly just a little bit off. <sighs> With that done, the forms are now ready for the concrete. This is going to take a while. During this, I realised that the lower holes for concrete actually made it harder to fill the form. Using a palm sander to vibrate the mix, 
you can see that at a point, this just makes the concrete escape from these holes, which I have since removed from the design. This is the most complex form I've tried, and I would say vibration of some kind is essential. I'm using a palm sander, but you could consider like a DIY vibration table or a massager from Amazon. The concrete is left to set for a day. In the meantime, I'm thinking about the table surface. I was going to print this, but just couldn't find a colour that I thought looked good. So I caved and made a metal one. But to do this, I needed a large circle. I have plenty of stock, but not a great way to cut it. A hole saw and a drill press can actually be used to cut metal, but it has to be the more expensive variety called bimetal blades. I can't afford a set like that at the moment, but I do have a cheap set of saws that cost me $20 for all of them. The internet made it clear to me that this was a bad idea, but when have I let that stop me in the past? Setting up my hole saw in my larger drill press, I secured my 5mm aluminum to the table. With a lot of WD-40, I began to cut. The saw was not happy, but it was somehow making it. It took about 5 minutes. The cut disc was rough, but a bit of a polish on the lathe, and I was actually really pleased with the result. I printed a bezel that also acted as a drill template. I find that printed drill templates are good to about one tenth of a mil accuracy, so not great, not terrible, but it does the job here. I tap four of the holes in the tapping arm, and then can continue with the build. Then this block with the linear bearing, followed by this arm through there, and that's just going to go in there. Look, I would have rather all the hardware to be black, but I just couldn't find all the sizes I needed in black, so. so smooth. That is... I'm quite proud of that, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Wow. <laughs> That's one of the cooler things I've made, I reckon. The head is its own component. This means that it could be easily replaced or swapped out to another head entirely. This system also allows for some calibration. By shimming between the head and the body, further accuracy can be achieved.
Finally, I'm installing the motor. This is a temporary setup. The pulley and belt I ordered hasn't arrived yet, so the belt is too long and the pulley is printed. But with that installed, the press is ready to use. Let me show you some features. The bed can be raised to the maximum build height in one mounting stroke, but these alternate mounting holes can be used to set the default bed position higher. The table has four captive coupling nuts, providing threaded holes for work holding. The side of the column can be used for mounting accessories like lubrication hoses or lights. And it has two threaded holes in the base for mounting to a bench. I'm now going to do a few tests with different size drill bits, starting off with an absolutely enormous 1mm drill bit. That went through with no problem, so I moved down to a half a mil drill bit. A little bit of difficulty, but it did work. See that tiny little hole? That's pretty cool. Finally, the hardest drill bit in the set, a 0.3 mil drill bit. So I made it through the material, but did break the bit. I'm going to call this operator error and the fact that the machine should be closer to 30,000 RPM instead of 24. All things considered, I think this is a great result. I'm not bothering with properly setting up the motor since I'll be setting it up with a larger motor at lower speeds when the parts arrive. I can't imagine I'll need a 0.3mm hole anytime soon. I'll flash a rough cost breakdown on screen now. As you can see, it's not very much for what it is. It's about half of what this cost me for, dare I say, a much better machine. Usually I try to show a project as part of these videos, like making a hammer on the lathe, but I'm not going to bother this time. It's a drill press. It makes holes. You will, however, be seeing it used in many future videos, I'm sure. Parts are linked in the description. Thanks to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching.